Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here with a little bit of a different kind of a video. Normally I have the video camera here facing this way so you get to see this background over here. So this time here I've got the video camera at an angle sideways so that you can see my messy, messy, messy workspace. All right, so I just got off of work. So I'm putting on my work clothes to do my second job. And my second job is building three string cigar box guitars for the kids. Um, so I'm putting on my, on, on my, my dirty clothes outfit and my um, dust collector outfit. And this, this actually prevents my clothes from getting stained because I'm going to be doing some staining. This here is a headstock that a gentleman wanted specifically to be looking like this. So I figured I could do that. This is a Doug fur neck with, believe it or not, a Doug fur fretboard. And this fretboard here, that, that gray that's on there, that's actual aged from the weather gray. And I am going to dark stain this here. But before I did that, I got out the, uh, the fine grit sandpaper. And I've already got this thing carved and filed and whatnot. But I just wanted to get kind of... I'm not polished, but I definitely wanted to take out some of the um, the grooves from the from the file. And this is a 220 grit sandpaper. So anyhow, this video here, I didn't want it to be all edited and cut and processed and uh, sterilized and um, you know, take one, take two, take three, take four, edit out the bloopers. Now this one here is just a, uh, a live uncut. Um, so if I make a mistake, it's okay. It's too bad for you if I make a mistake, cause I'm going to leave it in there. Now I could get all technical on, on the, all of these little corners here and, and Get them all sanded to perfection. I pretty much got them already. I don't want to say already perfect, but already good enough. Um, I did want to just take off the, uh, the sharp edges because I don't want anybody like poking themselves and cutting their cutting themselves on the on the edge here. So I'm just taking off the rough edges. Which makes me think if I'm gonna put a hook on that thing where am I gonna put it in the middle sticking up I guess I could do that I'll play around with it and see what it looks like one of the things I like to use here is this guy and this is a stick that's got sandpaper glued to either side so I got a fine side here and a coarse side here and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll sand my necks smooth with that thing but this one here is pretty much done I'm just kind of fine-tuning it before I put some stain on it now this this neck is going to match to the pair with this Java box and this Java box um, has been sanded and rough you can see all my fingerprints. Get my fingerprints all over that thing. I'll clean it up here in a little bit. But anyhow, so this box, that I want this thing to be black to match the box. So I'm debating in my mind, how am I going to do that? I, knew, I know I have some black stain up here on the shelf. Blah. Let's see what we got here. This 
This is gel stain. So with gel stain, you have to make sure not to get the um, stain and all the gooey stuff inside the fret slots. And if you do, which I probably will, you have to um, clear it all out before you put the frets in. So let's see here. What's the best way to do that? I have paper towel and Q-tip. So I'm going to experiment around here with this thing. You stir it all up. So I'll probably... Well, let's just here. Let's just let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Black. Now, I'm not going to get the top because on the top I think I'm going to do it um, a little bit lighter. Told you this was going to be a boring video. Not a whole lot of action. This is a real time though, real time. Look at that, see I'm already spilling it already. You say, there's a better way to do that. I know. I choose to do things backwards sometimes. Why? Um, that's a good question. I don't know why. Now, with this uh, stain here, you got to be kind of careful not to get it all over your, your fingers like I'm getting it right there. And why is that? Because you probably touch your face, touch your clothes, scratch your butt. And you don't want to get that stain all over the place. All right, so how am I gonna do this here? Let's see here. I already worked my way into a corner. Uh, all right. That's gonna be awesome. Look at that. It's already gonna be awesome. Looks like a finger. Are you giving me the finger? No. Okay, so I can just wipe off all the excess here in a little bit. We'll let it set for a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back and clean it up. But that's going to be awesome. If I do say so myself. All right, so now I'm going to I'm going to put it in this vice grip, and this is just to just to let it dry a little bit while I clean up myself here. Ah. Clean up by not making myself worse. All right, that was uh, that was dumb. Went from bad to worse because I used the wrong paper towel to clean myself with. This is real life, folks. Real life. Um, I do have another. Yeah, here it is, off the camera here. A new roll of paper towels. And I got me some water. So. See if I can clean up now any better. Nope. All right. Maybe I should edit this stuff out of the video, right? All right, so that's that. Here's the next one. Now, this next guy here is going to be paired with this box. Now I want to make sure not to get the stain from that neck on my hand and then onto this box. So, I thought, here. Okay, so here's the neck for this guy. And this is actually a maple 
fretboard on a Doug Fir neck. So, um, oh, this thing here totally needs to be sanded or filed first and then sanded. You can see all the grooves here. And this is a rough cut from the original. So, this will give me opportunity to show you exactly how I carve my neck here. So this here is the uh, Shintu rasp, which is a very aggressive, it's a bunch of like saw blades that are entwined together. I have a rough, coarse side and then a, a fine tooth side here. So I'm going to go with this rough side here. Now I'm just going to, what I do is I just kind of hold it here against my shoulder, kind of hold it in place and then just start. Of all of the processes of cigar box guitar, creating, manufacturing, building, whatever you want to call it, carving the neck is my favorite. Don't ask me why. I know you're going to ask me why. Why? I don't know. I I seriously don't know. There's something therapeutic in my mind about carving the neck. Um, if all I if all I ever did was carve necks, I would be happy. What's the worst part or the least favorite part of it is carving the saddle. Don't ask me why. I said don't ask me why. I don't I don't know why. All right, look at it. There's a knot right here. Look at that knot. So I have a knot in the neck. That is not cool. Just kidding. I think it's cool. What would be worse is if there was not a knot there. Again, this is coarse filing. I could literally spend hours doing this. I don't want to, I'm not going to spend hours wasting your time. bad I can tell man this is just like coming to life yeah so I, I look at it look at it in the light feel it and I can tell the contours how they should be according to how I like it um, that's what I strive for So I'm pretty much done with the, the treble side. Oh, I'm going to get the top too. And, and I like to like get these guys smooth as well because that's where all the cuts are from the saw when I go across. Zing, 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 zing and get that little shelf notch there. So, a lot of fine, fine tuned details. And then of course I take the, the uh, corners off here. Ah, come on. 
And to do that, I get the fine side of here. Kind of give it the old bevel. I'll go back later and hit it with the sandpaper. Now, what I like to do is I like to leave the rough on the back side of where the tuner is going to go. Why do I do that? I don't know. I just do. And I think I like to keep at least some portion of the neck wood original. So if there was paint on there or some sort of dirt or whatever, the original saw cut file marks from, um, from the original wood, I always like to leave something original. So that's where, it, that's this part here stays original on the majority, the vast majority of my builds. the round file to get into this little corner right here because the square file I can't like get those contours but uh, with this this I can so you can start seeing the neck here is starting to Take shape. Going back to the Shinto. Spin that dude around here. Now I could put this in the vice grip, but the vice grip is holding up that this guy here, so. Sometimes I do put it in the vice grip just to get an extra grip on it so I can get rough with it. I can smell that stain. I actually think it smells good. So I'm carving the heel. And there's no like formula, there's no math, there's no template on there. I just I just carve it so that it looks right. Number one, and it feels right, number two. And what's right for me may not be right for you. Um, fortunately. Fortunately, these uh, instruments are very forgiving. All right. Gosh, that's looking awesome. All right, that's about it. check double check double check triple check can maybe do it take off a little bit more here I'm gonna continue with the, uh, the round file and then of course the sandpaper so I can I'll be able to continue to um, contour it as I go okay so that's it for the Shinto for now back on the Shinto shelf. 
Now I'm going with the, the round file. And you can do any kind of file in here. Here's, a, here's another another file I often use. Uh, this one here's got big teeth on it, so it leaves grooves that I have to sand out later. But I've used this file since the beginning, since the dawn of time. And it's a very good file. What I like it is I like the, con the, the curved side, this side here. Not the flat side. I mean, I do use the flat side, but I use this curved side here to get into these these corners here. So So you can use this guy here or this round guy. Both of them. This one's got a little finer to tooth to it. Okay, so now I'm going to graduate to the, the stick that's got the coarse sandpaper on it. So I'm constantly looking and I'm looking for the, all the file marks, any kind of a bump. that this does good here for is it is it matches the neck to the fretboard because this is flat right so when I when I come over the top I just make sure that right there so I get a nice smooth edge all the way up and down with this guy now you can do it with it with a file or a sander sander this is just easy and very effective I'm gonna go back and sand it with just regular sandpaper and get a nice polish on it. Now I can flip this guy around to the to the fine side. This is the coarse side. I can use the fine side as well. ask don't you ever get tired of building cigar box guitars to which I reply ah! Making a mess. Awesome. Look at that. Woohoo. Alright. So now what I like to do also. Oh yeah, hang on. Remember I told you I was gonna take these edges off of here? Now is the time. Now Sometimes I do this with a sander too. I 
There's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh, awesome. All right, if you're a diehard cigar box guitar enthusiast, then you're still watching this video. If you're like a normal person, you've checked out a long time ago. So if you're still watching this video, shame on you. Just kidding. Okay, so on this, these edges here, same thing, I, I like to take it and just give it a little, little something something, just so they're not sharp, that's all. Do you have to do this? No. I just don't like there to be sharp corners anywhere. Right, so I'm always taking off the sharp corners. Same thing right here on these on these little guys here. Take those sharp corners off. Okay, what is next? Hmm. Well, I could polish it with regular sandpaper, or I could start putting frets in it. And I think just for the sake of this video, I'm going to do frets. Let's see here. All right, let's do the frets. I'm gonna point you down here just a little bit, so hang on. Hang on to your horses there. All right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna clean up this mess here first. Just give me uh, 30 seconds here. I told you this is gonna be a little bit of a different kind of a video. Okay, so what I do when I'm fretting is I take the headstock and I put it on my left hand side. And there is a reason for that. And then I get my frets. These are my frets. I use the medium frets and I get my frets from the CB Giddy. The CB Giddy. And I do use the Jumbo for the zero fret. So I'm gonna pull out one of them. One Jumbo zero fret. Come on. So this is why you're supposed to edit. Edit that crap out. Okay, so next is my fretting hammer. I've had this one here again since the beginning of time. This is the little brass side on this side. I don't use the brass side, I use the Teflon side here on this side. So it's just one of them little, lovely little hammers. It's the screw on the little um, Teflon side here. Awesome little hammer, it's the perfect weight. And then get yourself some wire cutters that have the flat side here. I'll show you why. Okay, so remember I told you you put the headstock to the left? Now, here's the reason. Um, I know you're not gonna be able to see this, but see those little bumps on the bottom? That's the bottom of the fret. And then the round part here, that's the top of the fret. So this part here that's the bottom, that's gonna go actually into the fret slot. Now this is what I do here, is I take this top little edge and I cut a 45. Dink. So, now it's angled this way, away from the top. 
That makes sense? Now, this is what I do here is I take that angle and it's pointing this way away from your hand as your as your hand is going down here. So, technically, that little angle is going away from it. It's going into the wood there, okay? And on this side here, I just cut it flat. So the top is the top is flat, but the bottom has got like a little angle that's angling in. And that is so that once I file this fret down, there's not going to be a little pokey thing there. Ah, good idea. Very, very good idea. Okay, so that's the zero fret, the jumbo fret. Now for the rest of them, I get my chair. Get my reading goggles. Pull up my britches. Sit my butt down. Now, one thing I didn't mention that I will mention now is that you want to clear out. Obviously, you want to clear out your fret slots. And I can just tell by looking at them that they're clean. A um, little bit of debris there. A little bit there. You can take it, turn it upside down and bang it. If you want to. Sometimes you get the vacuum cleaner, you can vacuum it out. Um, or you get a little, the little saw and run the blade through there. You want to make sure to do this because if you don't, then you will have high frets. And that's a problem because you'll have fret buzz. And um, just take the extra time and the precaution to make sure your slots are clean first. Same thing here, I'm gonna, this is a brand new fret, brand new fret, so I'm gonna cut back that tip, get my little 45 degree angle there. I know it's kind of a little bit blurry, but you gotta trust me when I say it's got a 45 degree angle on it. And you can kind of tell when you look at it where that angle is gonna go back. Now, that's already got a little 45 on it. How convenient. Look at that, perfect. All right, one piece of fret wire. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frets. That's pretty good. All right, another brand new one. So we're gonna cut it back, get a little angle there. I remember when I first started building cigar box guitars, I would actually glue the frets in. Now I only glue in on an as needed basis. If I have a real wiggly, sloppy fret, then I might have to glue it, but I, you don't have to. I mean, I, I I haven't needed to in a long time.
All right, three more fret slots. Now what I always do is I always double check my work and I do that just by looking looking for high and low frets and I can see okay there's a few that still need to be pounded in a little bit so I'll go back give each one three taps one two three 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's it. That's it. <sighs> okay, so next we got to cut the or file down, grind down the edges of the frets, then file them, and then sand them smooth. But I'm not going to bore you with that. I think this video has gone on long enough. What do you think? What? Keep going? All right, we'll keep going. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera to the grinder. There's the grinder. And I'm going to grind down the edges of the frets. All right, here we go. run my finger across it to make sure it's smooth make sure there's nothing sticking out
I'm just feeling the edges for fret spike. Now, I have a tool over here called a belt sander. Right there. And this is a little trick I can do with the belt sander. All that that does is it just gets all my ends uh, perfectly uniform. Oh, that looks awesome. All right. So now I'm going to uh, dress each one of these fret ends. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that right now because I'm looking back here and I can see that I still need to sand this the neck some more. I can still see some rough pieces there. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's still some. Still some polishing I need to do here on the actual neck itself before I get too carried away. I need to attention to detail. All right, well, I do hope you enjoyed this little different kind of a video. I know I did. What I like to do is just a little bit every day, not a whole lot. I call it baby steps. So if I can do a little bit every day then through the course of a long time, I can get a lot done. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, peace out.